मी बंसाज दिल्ली हायकोर्ट रिस्पेक्टेड प्रोफेसर डॉक्टर उषा टंडन फैकल्टी ऑफ लॉ यूनिवर्सिटी ऑफ दिल्ली एंड डियर स्टूडेंट्स I welcome you all on behalf of Faculty of Law, University of Delhi, to this webinar, Negotiation and its Scope in India. Now, I would like to invite Professor Dr. Shah Dandan, ma'am, to deliver the presiding address. So, first, let me introduce her achievements in the field of law. Ma'am is the head and dean of the Faculty of Law. Ma'am is an eminent professor of environmental law, population law, gender justice, and family law. Thank you, Kavita. I think we'll save a time this. Thirty years. Over you, ma'am. Thank you, thank you, Kavita. Uh, Honorable Miss Justice Nina Bansal Krishna, Judge Delhi High Court, my colleagues, especially the organizing committee, Dr. Sunanda, uh, Dr. Nilya, Dr. Shikha, Dr. Kavita. and all others who are connected here as well as the dean students for which this particular program um, has been arranged well i'm immensely uh, delighted to welcome uh, honorable ms justice nina sel krishna who then is an own alumni a uh, llb from campus law center and llm also from the uh, faculty of law so it must be i mean coming back for you uh, i mean connecting even though this is uh, still uh, going up program but uh, i'm looking forward for your physical meetings also uh, to the law faculty so it is just a beginning you can say through this uh, i was just going through briefly uh, the profile of uh, her ladyship and one of the things with which i was most impressed which is i think most relevant also for this uh, event is that uh, in the government of delhi department of justice she happens to be the first director of alternative dispute society so at that particular time that institution was was by the name of society but the year was not written there so i couldn't make out uh, that how it has really contributed to the uh, well organized and systematized institution which we are now calling as a mediation or by other names so her interest there in this particular area uh, we will say is not new this goes back uh, to that particular period whenever when then when then okay so at that it's more decades so unlike our times uh, this uh, when this paper was no longer there even though we were having that particular paper on arbitration now this paper is not only there in the law schools but this is also one of the compulsory paper um as described by the law of india and we have to do this paper also uh, for few years and uh, sure this paper is very interesting even though teaching it at uh, faculty of law is a challenging task why because uh, the number of students happen to be so large that those kind of activities which we want to have here simulation exercises that really becomes a very very challenging task for teacher but uh, anyhow uh, we are having this paper and uh, uh, i think the students are enjoying it like anything because it's absolutely different from the other papers here at faculty of law from the other 29 papers absolutely paradigm shift there in we are talking about rights we are talking about persistence uh, here we are talking about more of interest and uh, peaceful settlement now uh, as i requested and as you have provided the topic of today's uh, um, your lecture is on uh, negotiation its scope here in india so i was just wondering and that uh, uh, first of all that yes it appears to be a very very important topic uh, to get enlightened to our students but but i was just wondering how do we relate it to the adr because whatever material we are giving to our students i'm talking about our uh, case material and whatever material i have 
may not have read the whole material, whatever material I have read. I could not find that this is one of the technique for Zunan. So whatever things are there, they happen to be that if you are, if you are having some good, if you are having some need, if you want to acquire something which is in the hands of somebody else, and these are techniques, these are the techniques which you can adopt to acquire that. There is a very famous illustration which we give to our students um, that there is a person who's having a huge piece of land, but he's not willing to sell that. There is a person who really wants to buy that piece of land or his own copies, whatever is in his mind. So he thinks further, wants to know the reason why that man, the owner of the land is not willing to sell that huge land, say four acre, five acre, um, just I mean for the example. The reason which comes out to be that uh, he is emotionally attached to that land. So sentiments are attached to that land and they are, even though he's not making any use of that land, but still he's not willing to sell that land. So what we teach to our students that one of the negotiation strategies in this situation is what we call it salami. That you do go for the whole, that is five acre, 10 acre. You negotiate a less portion of it. And that is listen him, make him understand. And then gradually in the course of time, you can have it. So this is just one of the examples. So where is the dispute here? And if we go for other strategies, so many other things which are there, they are again more on uh, negotiation skills to arrive at some ag uh, agreement like Bhatna, Malatna, Watna, etc. To arrive at certain agreement. So uh, one of the things which I'm really looking forward in your lecture is that make us understand that how can you use negotiation as one of the dispute resolution technique. Why? Because if, uh, uh, if there are two parties there, you know, we negotiate here and there. We negotiate from rickshawala to the mall. Our language becomes different. To rickshawala, we say, nahi, bahut zyada charge kar rahe ho. Mall mein we say, no, no, that, what discount, what discount, more discount. Negotiate there. There's no dispute. There may be conflict, there may be difference of opinion, but there's no dispute. So. This conflict has not reached to the level of the dispute. And so how, how the negotiation is related with that. So it is with that particular kind of a thing, which I'm really looking forward uh, to listen on Mr. So uh, then I invite my address by welcoming you all uh, to this webinar and uh, maybe to the anchor to take it forward. Thank you. Thank you so much, ma'am, for your presiding address and gracing this occasion with your presence and for extending all your support for conducting this webinar. So now I would like to invite our program director, Dr. Sunanda Bharti, associate professor, to briefly explain the topic for the benefit of the audience. So uh, uh, ma'am is the certified mediator from IIM, Indian Institute for Arbitration and Mediation, she is the convener of Auditive Dispute Resolution Module. Over to you, ma'am. Yeah, thank you, uh, Dr. Kavita. Uh, respected uh, Professor Usha Tandan, Madam, uh, Honorable Justice Dina Krishna Ji, our esteemed keynote speaker for the day. Namaskar, ma'am. Uh, my colleagues, uh, the audience, uh, have learned and of course, uh, wonderful students who are here to enrich themselves. I welcome you all uh, to today's webinar on the scope of negotiation in India. Now, though as uh, has been highlighted sufficiently by Dean Madam, the topic is vast and we have many questions and have many, many curiosities. Uh, in knowing more about various aspects of how negotiation is linked with dispute resolution processes. Uh, still, let me make my small attempt at uh, sort of setting the tone for the webinar. And uh, uh, as has been said, 
in and day out all the cheat is a part of our lives a professional the last one now one may be negotiating for a job offer you guys as many students are participants in this webinar all of you might be negotiating uh, for an internship offer or perhaps the stipend that is supposed to be paid for that internship one could be say one's house buy car so many things uh, it could be a simple uh, it could be some some complex uh, hardcore legal matter involving alimony or child custody or it could be as uh, uh, something seemingly simple uh, as as negotiating with your child for finishing off his or her meals or homework in time negotiation is everywhere now given the presence of negotiation this ubiquitous this omnipresent aspect of negotiation in our daily lives it is not surprising that uh, that uh, we do hear that negotiation can be applied uh, uh, within the context of dispute resolution process such as mediation and, and uh, litigation settlement sessions now it is here that uh, that uh, Uh, we would love to have valuable insights uh, from honorable justice neena ji on how negotiation works in the legal field uh, how how uh, sustainable the resolutions are if at all we reach certain resolution are there any pitfalls in the indian scenario uh, what about perhaps the topics that are uh, that are that we have put beyond the 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 domain of negotiation they are not amenable to negotiation uh, i'm sure these and more issues uh, uh, would be covered by our honorable speaker and uh, we are eager to listen to uh, ma'am but before i hand over the baton to my colleague dr kavita let me remind the audience uh, that uh, we'll be running a q and a at the end of the webinar that is the question and answer session so if you have any questions uh you may use the chat box and my colleague dr uh, neelam uh, would be happy to as a moderator uh besides uh, as uh, the front that i have to inform you that webinar is being recorded as many of you might have noticed for the larger benefit of the audience uh yeah so that is all from my side i would like to request kavita to introduce our esteemed keynote speaker to the audience please over to you kavita thank you ma'am thank you for your introductory remark uh, now it is an honor to introduce to you all honorable justice neena bansal krishna who is an eminent judge of the delhi high court she did her llb from campus law center and llm from faculty of law delhi university she uh, joined delhi judicial service as civil judge in the year 1992 and was promoted to delhi high judicial service in year 2000 she held various civil and criminal courts and dealt with cases of various nature including matrimonial disputes motor accident claims protection of children against sexual offence money laundering terrorist and disruptive activities act prevention of terrorism act, and prevention of terrorism act she was presenting officer in national human rights committee in new delhi from 2005 to 2006 she was appointed as a first director in the department of law and justice and city of delhi for setting up delhi dispute resolution society which was the first institution set up by any state government for pre litigation mediation he is a trained mediator and master trainer with mediation and conciliation project committee supreme court of india having taken her training of trainers from cedr uk in 2007 Since then, she has travelled to various states in India for imparting training in mediation to lawyers, judges, and other sections of society. She has the post of director in Delhi Judicial Academy since February 2017 till May 2019. She was district and session judge South East District Circuit Court, New Delhi. She elevated as permanent judge of Delhi High Court on 28th Feb 2022. So over to you, ma'am. Yeah, thank you so much uh, for this elaborate introduction. I think for me to say that I'm an alumni of law faculty is enough, and there cannot be anything more uh, a matter of more uh, you know honor and pride for us to be a part of the faculty. And as uh, Dr. Tandon said, actually it's a 
a matter of immense pleasure for me to be connecting back to our own students in the faculty where once I was also a part of it. Uh, this was uh, Dr. Tindan, Dr. Bhart, Dr. Kavita, and all dear friends. Uh, a very good afternoon, and thank you very much for giving me this opportunity to interact with all of you. The tone has been set this uh, session. When I was thinking of what to say, I was wondering in what context we talk about negotiations. And as has been very rightly said, that negotiation is a fact of life. We all negotiate throughout the day, throughout our lives, right from the beginning till the end. We get up in the morning, our negotiations start with, with God. We pray, our day should be good. We'll come back to the temple in the evening and thank you. We start with the children, with our servants, with our wives, with everybody in the family. And the minute we step out with the sabzi one, with the taxi one, with everybody. So when each of us when we are in a mode of negotiation, trying to cajole people to, you know, take our line with a small uh, promise of price by saying, get me a cup of tea. Thank you very much. I'll get you, I'll let you go early. So these kind of negotiations and the very typical negotiation that we risk over. Is um, with a sabzi, we all know how we do a, a negotiation with a sabzi wala with, with small vegetables. We keep on uh, eating all the crabs, and at times when a sabzi wala is most hot, what do we do instead of reducing the price? He tries to add a value by giving some image, some coriander, nimbu, maybe. So that's an art of negotiation. We do it all the time, unconsciously, and we are not even conscious of the basic fundamentals and principles that we follow. There is a whole science behind how a negotiation must be done. And we do it most of it unconsciously, but through this, when we have a more structured program, we are able to flag those certain uh, nuances or the tricks or the uh, the base which help us to be able to practice it consciously and therefore improve our negotiation skills. Before I go into uh, negotiation as a student, because we have uh, young students here, this is one small uh, uh, story which I always like to share that whether we become negotiators, we become Whatever in our life, there is something which is very, very important for all of us to do. And that is, there is one thing which we all must try to acquire. For this, I tell a story of King Solomon. Some of you would have heard it. Some may not. There was this King Solomon who succeeded his father, David. It was very, very successful who were very, very popular. When Solomon took over, he had this jitters. He did not know how to, he was, he was having this uh, uh, doubts about being able to fill the shoes of his father. So he prays and he prays to God that please uh, help me. And when the God becomes very happy, he appears before Solomon and says, uh, son, what is it that you want? And uh, uh, can anybody think of what he would have asked? He wanted to be, uh, you know, able to match his father. So what is one quality of one boon that he asks from God? Anybody? Anybody, please, uh, we can make it a little more interactive. That will help us all uh, uh, to enjoy it a little more. Nobody? All right, then, then I'll, I'll say what I have to. He said, give me a listening heart. What is listening heart? Compassion. Give me a good heart where I can have compassion for people. And wisdom everybody will acquire with age and with experience. 
But what we need is compassion. And once you have compassion in your heart, you are a person, you are a person. You're, even if you have a little less knowledge or other qualities, your being a good person would always hold you in good stead. And this, this uh, you can practice and see how, uh, a, what a difference it makes if you were a good person. This you would have felt in your day-to-day -day interaction. There are some people with whom when you interact, you feel very nice. And you end up saying, if somebody was to ask you, why do you, why do you feel like that? We just have one word. He's a good person. And why? Because actually it's the honesty of character and personality, which is very, very important. And when we are talking of negotiations, it is important that we must have an honesty of our own character when we are in a process of negotiations. The uh, a very pertinent question was uh, put at the beginning of the session, that we all negotiate, we all know this art, we do it day in and day out, then why are we talking today about negotiation as a topic of ADR? Uh, very, very pertinent because um, if we were to see the continuum of our uh, dispute resolution, it starts with difference of opinion. When there is difference of opinion, what do we do? We talk through our communication exchange of ideas. We are able to sort, sort it out. The same thing happens when we want something which the other person has. We bargain. And somewhere in the middle, we are able to uh, satisfy ourselves and come to a solution. But the most important thing here is that we have a difference of opinion or we negotiate with two people only because there's an element of trust. These are known as two mechanisms which work between the parties. However, when this trust breaks, when you become suspicious, when there is uh, animosity, when there are emotions which become uh, violent, antagonistic, that is the time when you will not listen to a person in negotiations. Any proposal made by somebody would be outrightly rejected. And if something gets rejected, what is the next option that we have? we bring in a third person to help us to negotiate. And that is known as mediation. Mediation is nothing but it is an assisted negotiation where you get a third person who helps the two people to negotiate. This is where uh, uh, negotiations become very important when we talk of it as a subject. It has its own technique of doing Negotiations break when there is lack of trust. We've been talking of negotiations in our day-to-day -day life. But if you look at the MNCs, you look at the business houses, what do they do? They don't go running to the court. They don't go running to the third person. They all negotiate. They all settle the term amicably. Why? Because there is an element of trust, they know that they are working in their common interest and they have a common goal to achieve. However, the disputes arise amongst even the companies. That is largely because there is a break of trust, there is a breach of the terms, and then in such a situation, what is to be done? We have to go into litigation. Till about 1976, ADR was not known to our own uh, world. And the situation that we have in the world today in India cropped up in US. And when the situation cropped up, they had an international uh, uh, conference 
1976, and they came up with this option of having an aid, which was to have alternate dispute resolution mechanisms other than the courts, so that not everything goes to uh, courts, but there are other alternate mechanisms. Over a period of time, we have started calling them as not alternate. It is not an alternate to the uh, litigation, but it's a additional supplementary mechanism which have been evolved over a period of time to take certain kind of cases which are which need not be taken to the court system out and deal with them through our ADR mechanisms. Arbitration, of course, is known historically. It has been there. Uh, since the CP was enacted in no conciliation in Labor Act, it has been there all over. Lok Adalat are again a common ADR mechanism known. It is mediation which came in for the first time with the amendment of CPC in 2002 with Section 89 recognized mediation as an ADR mechanism. When we talk of mediation, there are two techniques basically we talk that is required for mediation. One, of course, is communication and other is negotiations. So today our focus is going to be on negotiations. So if we talk about negotiations, what is the end result that we are looking for? We are looking for a disagreement and fishing agreement and something which will build our relations in future. It has to be a win-win situation for all the parties who are negotiating. We, how do we negotiate? Generally in our day-to-day -day routine life, that I'll try to uh, discuss the of an illustration. A very common scenario in our all in our houses when you have a party, some guest comes to your house, gets a gift for your child. The child is very happy, but the children of the guest also want the same gift. And then start the hustle. Now, as a parent, as a uh, host, what is our first reaction? We start negotiating with the child. I said, please share it. They have come to your house. So we start with a request. Please do it. That work, it doesn't. It doesn't. So they shift the next step of reasoning. See, when you go to their house, they will also share it with you. So from request to reasoning, it doesn't work. It doesn't work, the child would not start with the gift. Then comes, what do we do? We start bribing. You give this gift, I'll get another one for you from the market. It'll be better, you'll get two more. Again, this also, the child will not get convinced. Because at that moment, that is the particular gift that the child wants and which he is not willing to share. When it becomes embarrassing, what is the fourth stage that we go to? We start threatening, we start losing our cool, and give a tight slap to the child. What happens? The situation has gone from it was not so bad, it began. It has become a situation where our negotiation totally, completely failed. It doesn't work. If you try to negotiate on power, on your authority, it will not work. And there comes the conflict situation, which creates animosity, happiness, break in relationship, all around. So what is it that we need to then understand when we are dealing with human beings? There are some 
qualities which we all need to understand. That's develop patience. Develop an understanding of what the other person wants, needs, and desires. When a person is desperate and wants something, they will never negotiate on it because that is their primary need. But if it is a want, it is a want for which they will be negotiating but they will to accept something else. And desire is nothing but a luxury where you can maximum negotiate. So one, when you interact with a person, you need to know that what we are negotiating for, how important it is for me, whether it is my need, whether it is my want, whether it is my desire. Likewise, you need to understand the needs, wants, and desires of the opposite party. And accordingly, modulate your technique of negotiations. Don't ever try to teach or preach, but try to understand and try to build bridges. That's what is required in order to be able to negotiate. Now, we, when we talk of negotiations, we need to understand the, the what is a dispute? What is it that we are negotiating for? It's all the core subject that you want. You want to buy vegetables, you want a dress, you want to buy a vase, you want to buy a particular thing. So there is a substance about which you want to negotiate. Surrounded, there is an up, uh, a layer above it, of the substance which is at the core, that is your emotions, that is the behavior. And the third component of any dispute is the, uh, the procedure, the people who are involved. If you are in negotiating with a person in whom you have absolute faith, your strategy or your behavior would be very different. But if it is a person in whom you have no trust, they, the one would be more aggressive, would have less faith, and there is a difficulty in moving forward. So whenever we are trying to negotiate, we need to understand that we need to address it as really emotions, religion, and the substance. Whenever there are high emotions, it would not work to make people understand. So first thing is understand their emotions. Why are they cooperative or they are being adversarial? And that is what binds a style of negotiation. There are two styles which are uh, uh, recognized. One is collabor collaborative and one is competitive. Now, what is collaborative? Collaborative is I have trust in you. I will get, try to work as a team and come to a solution which works for all of us. But when we are competitive, I am looking at you as an adversary. If, if I am looking at you as somebody who is adverse to my interest, there will be a lot of agitation. Now, I will I'll try to explain this, though I, am, I don't know if anybody, you, anybody has had any court experience. But generally, if you look around, in a matrimonial dispute, what happens? The lady generally is very, very aggressive uh, about having the husband of the day. The husband gets adamant about divorce. The lady says there is no question of divorce and I will have the custody of the child. Now, as a third person, when you're looking at this dispute, our conclusion is that this man is being unreasonable or the lady is being unreasonable interesting having the custody when father has equal right on the custody of the child. 
and our behavior changes towards the lady or the husband according to our own assessment of who's right or who's wrong. But we must understand that when somebody is negotiating hard on a point, essentially they are negotiating hard because that is something which is their need. That is something which is very dear to them. They do not want to part from it. Hard negotiators. Now, when I have to ask you, collaborative is better or uh, competitive uh, style is better. Generally, the answer is that collaborative is always better because there is a lot of cooperation, there is uh, goodwill, less of adversity. But we all need to understand, as I was trying to explain, that you become competitive negotiator on things that you need. You would collaborative on things on which you are open to negotiate. Therefore, whenever there is negotiation, the the uh, it is a mixture of both the styles. On certain issues, you will be collaborative. On some, you will be competitive. It is a maximum of both which constitutes a complete negotiation process. Both for all of us is that we need to not be judgmental about people only because they are being competitive or collaborative. Having said that, why do conflicts happen? That what is required to be understood to be able to deal with it. A major reason is perceptions. There are perceptions that we all have. There are stereotypes which we all carry. And the minute a person steps in, our perceptions, our stereotypes create a judgment or an image about a person. And that determines our conduct, our behavior towards that person. Now, there is a story of a man who gets into a metro. There's four children. This is uh, basically, essentially, based in US, where there was this metro, and this man gets in. And uh, the four children start misbehaving. They are jumping, they're rowdy, they're going from one end to the other. Oh, the people present in the, in the compartment carry up. And what is the opinion that all of us would form? That this man does not have, does not taught his children right manner. He not even controlling them and is not is absolutely unconscious of the discomfort that is being caused to all the people who are present in the compartment. So one of them who could not control himself goes to that man and he says, gentlemen, your children are misbehaving. They are being so rowdy. Why don't you tell them to be themselves? And then this gentleman says, oh, so sorry, I did not notice. I have just lost my wife. We are coming from the hospital. And because of my, my own uh, sadness, my own um, uh, loss of my wife, I, I missed out on my children. I didn't realize they are being proud to the discomfort of all the people present in the apartment. The minute he said that, what do you think was the reaction of the other person? He the immediately understood. When you were able to understand the person's attitude change. And he said, I'm so sorry for your loss. And we can quite understand 
the the pain that you are going through and also why the children are behaving the way they are and once you are able to understand the things in the right perspective a lot of things can sort out once you are the same page things become easier for us to sort out to arrive at a settlement and that is what is required it is a human tendency we all have a tendency to explain ourselves we always think i am right you are wrong we are all poor listeners we are in a rush to speak don't have the patience to listen and that is where the confusion occurs another reason what happens There is fear of loss of faith. There is an assumption that if I listen to other person, if I agree to what is being suggested, I'll become a weaker person. The other person will be a stronger person. Uh, the phrase used, "I the loser, the other person be the winner." The fear of winning and losing is what creates a hurdle. in moving forward in bridging our differences and coming to a settlement which is a win win for both the parties having said that question is that what is to be what is required to be and we are in a conflict situation the differences have arisen we are not in a position to negotiate directly because whatever i would say would be seen as a win lose situation by the other person how do we now cross this win lose situation to a win win situation in such a case what you need is a third person who can help you in trust building so what is required is the building of trust and a rapport trust building rapport how is it done how is it done through our communication skills which in itself is a very very big topic but uh, for a lay person what i would like to uh, emphasize is this is a very simple technique we get all this but just tagging so we are conscious of what we are doing is known as uh, mirror and match technique this mirror and match technique is that when a person comes in there is lot of mistrust you start mirroring them talk their language make them feel that you are one of them so once you start copying that person their behavior their language there is a sort of for which starts developing the other person realizes that you are you are not an adversary and then once you feel you have been able to develop that kind of comfort and that confidence in the other person then you start matching what is matching you start making that person change according to you or expected you start taking that person to your level and that is a uh, technique which we do always initially we follow we talk the way the other person is and gradually we make them understand and talk our language and accept what we are it works well in the rapport one rapport has been developed communications become simpler and it becomes easier to proceed further in negotiations here it may be a little out of context but i would still like to share that communications been right from the moment you see a person and the minute you see a person 
you start forming a judgment about that person. And that is where the problem comes. This example I share with everybody. I had it in a mediation with me. There was this couple from uh, Rajasthan who had come. The gentleman, it was a matrimonial dispute. The gentleman came dressed in a traditional Rajasthani dress with a, a pagadi. And his wife came uh, in a jeans and a short top and looked quite anxious. At the minute they entered the room, what happened? From within, I felt it's a mismatch. They cannot live together. So it's a case for divorce. Why? Because we all have our own stereotypes. We all follow our own mindsets and start judging other people. Of course, I was conscious that this is not my right judgment because unless you talk to the people, your way of dressing may not de define your mindset. It may not define your ideology. But what happens is these kind of stereotypes, they cross in, they interfere with the communication and they, they make our vision clouded. We all, like we say, wear colored glasses. We all have our own ideologies and we all look through our own perceptions. And that is where the problem is. And we sort out to clear out, to dispassionately understand that we need to see the problem in a clear. There will be problems that would always crop in in having a good negotiation. Now, when we start negotiating, what we need to do is separate people from the problem. What happens is the problem becomes people for us. And that is where the problem starts. Uh, I'll just try to demonstrate that how people become a problem. And this whole conversation which takes place between a husband and a wife. The husband says he thinks he's focused on the problem. So he says uh, we have got to do something about our house. It is always a mess. Simple problem in the house, you feel the house is cluttered, not organized. Who has been in business, tries to flag the problem by saying our house is always in a mess. What is the immediate reaction? The wife takes it as a personal affront, as an accusation that she does nothing. And immediately her reactions, you don't lift a finger. You don't do anything. You don't even do the things that you promise. Last night, and before it starts flaring, I can say, no, 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 I know, I know, don't do anything. It's just that. But by then, the wife has lost the cool. And she stopped listening. And she said, last night you, you would, Take the garbage out. I had to do it in the morning. You do nothing. The husband is now trying to take her back to the problem. So don't get defensive. I'm just trying to point out, and the wife uh, tempers have gone very high. It was her turn to take it to school. And then that now but as also starts reacting. Come on, I told you I had a breakfast meeting at the office. Now the wife begins to shout. Oh, so your time is more important than mine. What do you think? I'm sitting idle. I also have a job to do. Sick and of a sick will do. And when the husband loses his school, he's like, give me a break. And he walks out of the room. So what has happened? What has happened? The simple problem was that it is the house which needs to be organized, but it was perceived a problem of a person. I can be 
therefore the whole communication broke and the focus went to the person from the problem and and it became even a bigger issue. So when we are in negotiations, we need to take the parties from the person to the problem. Don't focus the person, focus on the problem. Don't generally, if you are also negotiating, when you get angry, last time you did not do that. You in the past have misbehaved. So what we start developing is on the dwelling on past. We start blaming you for what has happened in the past. As we need to take them to the future. What happened has happened. That cannot be changed. We need to move further to the future for a better relationship. So from adversarial as we were in the past, we need to collaborate to get to a win-win situation. So these are basic fundamentals of now, having developed a faith or trust, how is it that we should move forward? We have created a level pay fee. We are now shifted from what we need to do is go from position to, position to interest. What is required is that we shift when we are fighting initially, and this we do as lay person regularly, that I am elder, so I'm entitled. I am better I have the stills. So all the time we're trying to do a justification on what my position is. I am the elder of the house, so I have to be listened to I have to be followed, obeyed by everybody. But what is required is that we need to go to the interests. Same story again, we have a knowledge. I don't know how many of you have heard of it, but it's a very simple way of explaining how we go from position to interest. There was this mother, and there were two sisters, two girls in the house. The two girls in the afternoon, one of them gets hungry, goes to the refrigerator and finds an orange. Takes it out and comes to the room. The younger one, the minute she sees that orange, she also wants the same orange. And then starts the fight between the two sisters. Hearing the commotion, the mother comes in. And one mother is in. She takes orange from them and is now confronted with the situation of settling or dividing this orange between the two girls. And this is what we say, typically divide the orange into half, give one half to one and give one half to the other. But the other daughter says, I am the one who got it from the refrigerator. She did not even bother. So why should she get it? The young one starts off crying. I am the baby and I need it. So she's trying to develop the negotiation of position. As a mother, what happens is she knows that the elder one needs the orange peel for a face pack. While the younger one wants the juice from within. So what she does is she takes out the peel of the orange, gives it yellow. She takes out the juice of the orange, gives it the younger one. What has happened? This is where instead of a 50-50, both the girls have got 100%. The peel of the entire orange has gone to one. The juice of the entire orange has gone to the other. You understand the interests of the parties can be 100% opposed. Had it been a half of orange, they would have wasted half the orange and used only half. And this is where we say when we have to negotiate, we need to know the need, the interests of the other party to be able to achieve 
hundred percent from a situation, and this is where the biggest challenge lies. <clears throat> What is time? I'm recording. Uh, can somebody tell me what is the time frame? Generally, normally it was, I mean, 40 45 minutes so that we can have more time for the interaction. So, okay, we can just wind up uh, in another, yeah, area. in five minutes, then I'll uh, 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 wind up uh, uh, by saying because it's actually a huge thing. We go on. Yes. yes. Uh, when we are negotiating, try to develop options. You should have one, two, three, four to be able to choose which will fit both the parties and satisfy them both. So the term used is options. O -P -P -I -O -S. Stand for only proposals that include others' needs succeed. Whenever you are trying to negotiate, try to put your suggestion as if it will be meeting the need of the other person. I'll just give one example I think I'll try to uh, wind the touch uh, by saying that uh, there was a television debate uh, with Walter Mondale in 1984 campaign. Colonel Egan was asked whether he would be able to handle the demands of the presidency. He was uh, 84, I think, at that time, given your age, and considering that Mondale was only, is 17 years younger too. And Ronald Reagan said, I don't think age is a problem. I'm not going to exploit for political purpose my opponent's youth. And he avoided the question about the age. So when you reframe, what he done from his old age, he has shifted the focus to the younger age of the opposite of, of the opponent. How you frame your uh, proposals is what can lead to a great uh, for you to get much more. You need to therefore understand this reciprocity is what works. What if you uh, frame it in a way that it means other people's problem, it'll uh, um, stick them to, to be more open to your proposals. Um, I think uh, with the time country, uh, all I can say is that uh, for negotiations, what you need is a good communication skills, negotiation skills. Now, uh, I'll just answer the one question which began, that when we said in the beginning that we negotiate every day, we negotiate on everything, that may not be a very correct understanding because what we do is we bargain. Proposal and counter proposals, negotiations much more than bargaining. When we negotiate, we also prepare ourselves, we must have a lot of information of what I need, what the other persons need. So before we get into a negotiation, there is a lot of preparation required. Then there has to be an offer which is acceptable to other person. So what we say is first is the preparation, second is the proposals. Third stage is the bargaining that we usually do. Give me this and you take this. And once we have bargained, the last stage is how to close it. When do you think it is a good proposal and we need to close the deal and accept the deal? 
these are basically the steps of negotiation. What we do is only bargaining in our day-to-day -day life. What we need to learn is what is the technique of negotiation to be able to achieve the maximum in a given situation and the available resources. I think with that, I'll uh, close. Any question that any one of you wants to put is uh, welcome. Thank you, ma'am, for enlightening us for your excellent talk on this topic. And thank you for letting us know the qualities which we all need to understand while doing negotiation, like emotions, procedure, and substance. Ma'am has beautifully highlighted basic fundamentals of negotiation. I once again thank you, ma'am, for this very enlightening chair and I am really immensely benefited and I'm sure our students who have joined this webinar they have also must have benefited by this lecture so now I would like to invite Dr. Neelam Tyagi to conduct the question answer session over to you Dr. Neelam yeah the ma'am such an side talk a few questions were posted in the chat box uh, during the presentation the first one being from a final year student of CLC. He's asking, what is the difference? Uh, his name is Ajay Kumar Ranjan. And he's asking, what is the difference between interest-based bargaining and negotiation? So this is the first question. Secondly, bargaining and negotiation, the same point in time. Yeah. Uh, negotiation is the whole larger process, which includes bargaining. Bargaining is only one of the stage of the negotiation process. When you get into the negotiations, you need to prepare yourself. You need to know what you want from yourself, what you want from the other person. Like I ended up by saying that there is a four-stage process of negotiation. Bargaining just happens to be one of the stage. Bargaining is when you actually start giving a proposal and start getting a counter proposal. And when you think you have reached a common point, that is where you go into the closure of the negotiation. So bargaining is only one stage. I, I mean, because of paucity of time, um, I could give you life examples. When you go to Sarojini Nagar, when you are roaming around, you suddenly like a belt and you pick it up. You go immediately, uh, you like and you pick it up for so whatever you that man says 500 you say 200 and he gives a you gives it to you for 200 that's a kind of bargaining you have done because you have not gone prepared and when you bought the belt there is nothing but regret why because you not need it you done with an item so the price also may not make you happy because you are not followed the technique of negotiation. Negotiation involves what we call as negotiation dance. And now uh, I think we'll keep that for uh, some other time, but there is something as negotiation dance, which is mandatorily should be followed to get the satisfaction of having held a good negotiation. Now let me talk about interest-based bargaining and negotiation, I think that gets answered. Negoci interest phase is when you are bargaining, how should you bargain? You should not bargain in a position. What should the principle it should be the interest? Negotiation is the whole big process. Bargaining style is positional or it can be interest based. I think. All right, ma'am. So. Uh... Uh, one of the students from CLC, Om Prakash, thank you for the informative lecture. And again, Jay Ambat from CLC is asking, can you please guide us what options from career point of view are available in this uh, field? Oh, fantastic. This is one question. Um, uh, we started way back in 2005, and there were a lot of uh, doubt and questions about, uh, uh, you know, what, where is video going to take us? Today we are talking negotiation as part of mediation. I'm sure all of you are aware that when the Kashmir problem came up, there were some mediators who were appointed, right? This was done for Ayodhya. This is being done for international issues. 
because these cannot be sorted out through any other procedure except through negotiations. And where we have mistrust, we need a third neutral person who can help us to negotiate. In, in India, in that world over, mediation has emerged as one of the most strong mechanisms of ADR mechanisms. And uh, when we started in 2005, essentially it was Supreme Court of India under the ages of Mediation Conciliation Project Committee that this mediation was being promoted. Today, it is recognized as good as arbitration. People taking any have become certified mediators. <coughs> and work is being referred to you independently as a mediator. Aside from this, you can also get attached to the to the mediation center of any of the courts, district courts, court people, court, who have a separate center where you work there as a professional. We are not confined by mediation is concerned uh, only to the courts. There are so many organizations and institutions which are working as mediation centers and they're providing the facility of mediation. You can join it anywhere. So you have a career prospect of being an advocate of theater, or you can join any organization, any institution dealing in mediation and have work as a full profession. Okay, ma'am. So there's one Nisha from Law Center One. So the student is asking about the ethics and fairness in negotiation, and she's giving one example also. That if a person asks for higher price for goods and the student gets accepted, so it's unfair the part people who ask for higher price. So in, in view of this example, if you can throw some light on the ethics and fairness in negotiation. See, here the question is, you and I, we both are uh, negotiating directly. The shopkeeper wants the maximum profit for himself. And therefore, he has priced an item at a certain price, which may be overly priced, but as a customer, it is a fundamental principle that you have to be aware. So this is where preparation comes in. You need to know the company, what is the value of the cloth or the embroidery or material used that product. The shopkeeper is trying to make maximum benefit for himself. So there is no ethics involved in it because inherently it's a relationship of seller and buyer. But when it is a third person, like a mediator, then comes in all the action of ethics. This has happened many times in mediation. When the mediator is told that I'll accept less, but the other person becomes uh, willing to give more. I mean, there are lots of issues for me to be able to tell you in this short time. Uh, may not be easy, but it is when a mediator is involved, then it is his responsibility to ensure the new party suffers because of this kind of uh, uh, not complete change of uh, proposals and proposals. Okay, um, so uh, my other from LZP2, she's asking that during the process of negotiation, we are required to have an assertive body language. And, uh, you know, there's emphasis on collaborative style as well. How can you balance between these two, uh, you know, uh, styles while negotiating? See, uh, these are all uh, huge questions and they're topics in themselves. Uh, for me to be able to answer in one line may be difficult. The first question is about the body language of the mediator. The yes. question. Yeah. I mean, well, she said uh, we need to be assert, uh, because we are being competitive. And on the other side, there's a thrust on collaborative style as well. So how do we balance between the two when yeah, we are actually the I, Yeah, but that is what I was trying to explain, that you go competitive on certain things which you really collaborate on something which, which you believe you share. So whenever you are negotiating on something, It'll be an amalgam of both. Like I said, in the case of matrimonial cases, there are lots of interests which are involved. How do we negotiate in such like cases? We go competitive on the custody. 
the mother goes competent, then what happens? She is assertive. Being assertive is not a negative quality. Being competitive is not a negative quality. That is what we all need to understand. If I'm being competitive, that is because my interest is that I'm not to share it. As the husband is not so competitive of the child, leave it up. By being assertive, by being competitive, I've been able to get what I wanted. I am not keen on continuing. So we collaborate on the issue of divorce. We both agree, all right, we go for it. So it's a collaborator. So whenever we are negotiating, it will be a mix of all these uh, uh, attitudes or the styles. Because on certain things, one would be competitive, on certain things, they both would be collaborative. We cannot say one is better than the other, but it is always uh, both, which will always be, maybe in some cases, collaboration may work. In some cases, we may be co uh, cooperative. If there is only one interest involved, but if there are a group of interests, then it will be a mix of both that uh, we use to do in And the last question is from our program director and subject convener, Dr. Sunanda Bharti. Ma'am is asking, uh, how can lawyers of parties help the negotiation process? Yeah, uh, again, a huge, uh, uh, one hour lecture, I don't know how to uh, answer it one night, but uh, what happens when parties come to uh, uh, waging war, uh, they are entrenched in their positions and they cannot separate themselves from their problem. So I, I am the one who has suffered. I am the one who has been thrown out. I am the one who's been deprived. So what are they focusing on? They are focusing on positions. Is the lawyer, like a friend, is able to help them to shift the focus from the position to the interest. All right, you have been treated shabbily, badly, but what is it that you want to do? I want to walk out of this marriage. So this is where the lawyers are able to help the parties to understand. Lawyers help us in law. When the parties come, they do not understand the law. And this is where we take the help of the lawyer to make them understand that in law, this is your position. You cannot ask for anything which is not permissible under law. Lawyers help us in being trust, help us in positioning, help us in understanding the law. They are like uh, friends in mediation and an indispensable part of mediation. Okay, thank and you just, again, ma'am. Uh, just, uh, I mean, uh, add on uh, uh, the last question by the Sunanda, uh, or maybe uh, it's a, a different perspective, Sunanda. You know, uh, what we discuss is that the skills and qualities of a lawyer for the adversarial system based on rights and the skills and qualities of a mediator are absolutely different. So when a person or lawyer not bring that particular thing, so how can, uh, is it really uh, justified? I, I'm using the word ethical even, uh, that uh, I mean, day and night, they are thinking in some manner only for their client, that they will really can help this system. Uh, see, what I say is absolutely right that uh, when an advocate is working as a mediator for the mediation, med to be a mediator, you need absolutely different skills, there are different qualities. But when we are talking of lawyers who are coming with the parties, they have the same role as that of a lawyer or advocate. What we are talking about is they should get more cooperative. They should understand that in mediation, the role changes because our aim is not to be adversarial. We are not going to counter everything, but we are trying to work out a solution which converges, where interest of both the parties converge. And for this, you have something very right that even advocates must be trained in this process of mediation. Unless they understand the process of mediation, they would continue to take it as a courtroom. And that 
their attitude would be the same as if they are there to win a battle. It is not a winning of battle. It is a win of both. We need to change our attitude when we are in the mediation center. The lawyer's role becomes more collaborative and this will happen only when he understands the process of mediation. So it is a ground reality where there are other things. Yeah. And the ground are... reality is that now after 50 years, I think 2005 to 17 years, the lawyers have changed their attitudes. Initially, they would obstruct, they would not let the matter settle, essentially because it was being perceived that they would lose their uh, profession. They lose a client. So they, they were quite obstructionist in their role and they were going to courts. Over a period of time in these 15 years, advocates have also realized that if they are more uh, supportive, a reputation is being built for an advocate that he is the one who assists, helps the parties in coming to a, uh, to a compromise or a settlement. And they are not losing on it. Their attitudes are also changing largely because they have understood what mediation is all about. The second aspect is, I mean, I'm telling you the practicality is that yeah. they're charging the parties separately when they're coming to mediation set. So it's actually become a decent equal. And therefore they're not adverse in coming to mediation center and working towards a um, collaborative settlement. That's the ground reality. Yeah, uh, yeah. I think uh, we need more lectures. Why? Because uh, one answer also leads to another question. Another. And I know have, because this is it's a huge. Yeah, it's big topic. Yeah. And, uh, when we talk lawyers, rule of lawyers, when we talk of mediator as a part of negotiation, when we talk of parties doing a negotiation, it is all uh, complete yeah. topic in themselves. Yes, yes. In a nutshell, I don't know how to concise it and, uh, you know, break it to um, all of you. Thank you so much, ma'am, for answering all those questions, clarification, and great presentation. Over to you, Dr. Kavita. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Neelam Tyagi, for this conducting, for conducting this question answer session. Now, I would like to invite Ms. Shika Kambosh to give vote of thanks. Technology, before you say, can I just say a word? I yes. just want to thank all of you for giving me this, uh, you know, good interactive. Uh, Dr. Kavita, Dr. Bharti, and of course, Shikaji, I think who was uh, uh, responsible for bringing me on board. Thank you. Thank, thank you all so much for uh, giving me. Pleasure. I think we all, not only the students, even uh, this is a, a subject which is new for even us, for teachers also. And I'm so happy to see most of my colleagues are here, especially who are teaching this subject. And we have really enjoyed it. So rather, we are thankful to you. And there's a formal vote of thanks, I think. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. And it has to be done. <laughs> uh, well, Honorable Justice, Miss Nina Krishna Bansalji, most respected and uh, beloved our uh, head and Dean, Professor Dr. Usha Tendenji, very dear and most humble Dr. Sunanda Bharti, who is the program director, and uh, Turnet senior faculty members, my dear colleagues, and above all, my students. It is a great honor to me for proposing the vote of thanks for this webinar. And I really thank from the bottom of my heart to, uh, to you, uh, Learned uh, Ladyship, because uh, it has been, you know, uh, more than 15 years I know you. And I, I really, you know, uh, thank from bottom of my heart, ma'am, that when I met you first, it, you were so humble. And even today when you, you are at, you know, being honored as a high court judge, you are carrying the same humbleness with you. That is really something, you know, with which everyone should learn something from you. And um, today's lecture was very, very interesting. And you have really opened a lot of, uh, you know, horizons which were not known to the students and to the faculty members as well. And uh, in the same line, I would like to thank Professor Usha Tendon, ma'am, 
because she was so humble and she has always been a guiding force uh, for uh, giving us a lot of motivation to conduct the lecture series on ADR. And in the same line, I would like to thank to Sunanda Bharti, ma'am. She, she's been such a uh, torch bearer for each one of us. And uh, she has always motivated us to throw some you know, new insights about the subject to the students and how we can you know, involve the uh, practical aspect uh, while teaching the theory part of the subject. That is really a most important thing, which as a teacher, I, we should do, even it has a responsibility. So uh, ma'am, um, not uh, at, at last, I would like to thank uh, Dr. Ajay Sunawane. Who, is, who has been uh, a technical support to us. He is an assistant professor uh, with us at Law Center too. And uh, I would like to thank each one of the student coordinators who have made this program a great success. I would like to thank Master of Ceremony, Dr. Kavita Ma'am, and uh, the one, uh, Dr. Neelan Tyagi. And uh, I would like to thank to my students who have been you know, very, very active listeners too. And they have raised very valid questions and they have really you know, uh, make it a great success. Thank you so much, ma'am. And I really want this session to, to, to be in continuous. And we would, uh, we and the students would love to learn a lot more from you. And thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you. So much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you.